Sabrina, Sabrina Artel. Welcome to Trailer Talk. Trailer Talk happens in my 1965 Beeline Travel Trailer. We go to main streets and events, big conversations from a little trailer from my neighborhood to yours. Come on in. Thank you so much. Well, what a pleasure to be here with you, and especially in this nifty trailer. Oh, thank you. So, where do we begin? I want to say it was up almost the entire night reading your most current book, Earth AA. And what absolutely intrigued me was this idea that the Earth, the planet, as I've known it, as we know it, is no longer, and so we're in a different stage of things. The Earth still has the same number of continents, and gravity still works and all that. But there is no question that it's changing in powerful ways right around us. We've, we've put enough carbon in the atmosphere to add about two watts per square meter of extra energy to the surface of the Earth. It's like having two small white Christmas tree lights on every square meter of the Earth's surface. Which doesn't sound like much, but it turns out to be a lot. Right. Enough to melt ice, enough to change the way that rain works, enough to turn the oceans acid. Uh, uh, these changes are enormous and they're only just beginning. We can't stop what's already happened. We can still stop some of the worst that's to come. So please share with us, Bill, what is happening? You're talking about the rate at which moisture becomes absorbed and then drops heavily flooding. You talked about your own sure, neighborhood in Vermont. Uh, things that are happening in your yeah. own neighborhood, right here in the Catskills, we've had flood after flood yeah. after flood. And it's no mystery why. Everybody who's done high school physics knows warm air holds more water vapor than cold. Okay? Mm -hmm. As we've warmed the atmosphere, it's become about 5% more moist than it was 40 years ago. That's an astonishingly large change in one of the most basic physical parameters of the planet. Things like that aren't supposed to change except over right. eons, you know. Um, because there's more water up there, there's more water coming down. And so these deluges and downpours, what the engineers call a thousand year storm, becomes ever more common. I mean, today, there's a million people trying to figure out where they're going to spend the night in Pakistan because the place where they spent the light last night and all their lives is now underwater. Uh, something like that's happening almost every day. Well, and then there's this trying to catch up and looking at the model that the United States has set, right, with its energy extraction, fossil fuels, and you address this in your There's book. unfortunately, unfortunately, I mean, it's completely right. unfair to the developing world, but it's mere reality. Uh, if China and India emulate, as they have every right to do, what we did in the U.S., then we have no prayer of even slowing climate change. If they live as, uh, well, I mean, as over the top as we have been, mm -hmm. uh, then the planet has no chance. That means we're going to have to meet somewhere in the middle and hope that we can meet far enough down the scale that, that physics and chemistry will be appeased. So how does this tie into what's being faced <clears throat> right here, where we are sitting now in the Catskill region, New York State, Pennsylvania? Hey, look, you guys are now, you know, now you know what it's like in Appalachia in the coal fields. Mm -hmm. Now you know what it's like in the oil, you know, in the oil regions of the Gulf. Um, mm -hmm. Now you know what it's like to be a victim of uh, the circumstance that there's something yeah. valuable under your soil. Now you know what it's like to be manipulated by the big energy companies who are the ones who are making the real money out of this. Um, and and it's, a, it's a tragedy that will be uh, repaired only if people use it as the opportunity for building community, for building some kind of solidarity, not just in this region, but with people all over the world who are suffering from the same effects of fossil fuel. If we cannot kick fossil fuel, then we have no chance. Let's hear some of the numbers. Mm -hmm. The climatologists have made it absolutely clear that unless we get off fossil fuel right away, that we will see the temperature of this planet climb five or six degrees in the course of this century. If one degree melts the Arctic, we better not find out what five or six degrees does. We're like the guy 
He goes to the doctor, and the doctor says, look, you're already in the zone where people keel over from heart attacks and die, yeah. and I suspect you've already had a small stroke, and you better get to work. That's the moment we're in, and hopefully we'll use that moment wisely. And so using it wisely, since <clears throat> we're in the emergency right now, globally, with climate change, the temperature, the amount of emissions, So the right? thing we have to do yes. is get off fossil fuel. And the mechanism for getting off fossil mm -hmm. fuel is to raise the price of fossil fuel quickly so that we will quickly be spurring the economic transition that we need to make. As long as you can burn cheap coal and oil and gas, then investing in windmills and solar panels and whatever else isn't going to happen mm -hmm. on the scale that we need it to happen. We've got to raise the price high on fossil fuel and we've got to do it in such a way that we don't bankrupt people. We have to take that money from the oil companies, we have to charge them a huge fee each year for the right to put carbon in the atmosphere at all, and we've got to take that money and give it back to Americans. They get, should get a check every month for their share of the sky. They should be made whole against this increase, but we've got to do that. We've got to dismantle the business model of the fossil fuel industry, and we've got to do it really fast. So you talked about <clears throat> we're past peak oil now, mm. right? So there was this period, it was the, the party, so to speak, right? Mm. The, the cheap fossil mm. fuels, and we're leaving that now. Mm -hmm. And so now what you addressed in your book is that the ways to tap in, to extract these fossil fuels, and natural gas is a perfect example, you have to... Everything's getting harder. It's harder and harder, more expensive. So um, now we've got to go down beneath yeah. your house and, you know pump a lot of weird chemicals into things and break it all right. up and whatever in order to get a little bit of gas out. Now to get oil out, we got to go down a mile beneath the ocean where we obviously have no idea what we're doing right. and mess around, you know, on and on and on. So how do we do what you're suggesting if we're really in this, you know, if I'm, if, if I've uh, accident, had a terrible accident, I can't say, oh, wait a minute before I get help. I mean, we're in, if we're... The only way that I know how to do yeah. it, the only method that I can think of, because historically it's been what it's taken for big changes, is to build big movements to demand them. Power and money don't yield because it's the right thing to do. They yield because they run into some power as strong as they are. And we've got to build that power. We're not going to do it with money. Exxon's always going to have more money than yeah. we've got. We're going to have to do it with other currency, with bodies, with passion, with spirit. Well, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much, and thank you for the brownies. You're welcome. It's a very nice studio. <laughs>